Okay, so you've hopefully already done the types of forces sheet in this unit. So now let's do a couple of these. We're just going to pick a few letters of these to go over. So we're constructing free body diagrams. A couple things to remember. And when you do a free body diagram, this one actually gives us like a, a dot to start with. Usually you just draw a dart, draw a dot, you add some arrows talking about the direction of, you know, whatever force it is, and that that's it. It's super simple. So uh, a is a really easy one, okay? Uh, something to remember, if acceleration is zero, then the forces are balanced. So that means all things pushing up and down are equal. So kind of important thing to note, and you'll see that later. So let's look at A. Physics book is resting on the table. Okay, so we start with our little dot here. It's resting on the table. We know that it has a downward force because there's a force of gravity. We'll just call that Fg. And then, of course, it has an upward force as well, which is the normal force. In this case, these forces are equal, not because of Newton's third law. You know, people automatically assume action equal and opposite reaction, but that's not the case because it's equal and opposite reaction with the same kind of force. Well, these are different kind of forces, right? This is a normal force. That's supposed to be an N. And this is a force of gravity. So it's not because of Newton's third law. It's because there's no acceleration, right? So there you go. All right. So that, that's easy. That's done. Like we're literally done with A. Super easy, right? So let's do uh, another one. Let's do D. D is a little bit I mean, I guess it's just not as easy. It's not hard, but it's just not as easy. So, a sledder has reached the bottom of the hill and is coasting to the right while slowing down. So, this is important, this coasting thing. It means that it means there's no really there's no real applied force. They're just coasting, right? So, that's not an applied force. So, a couple things. He sled in on the ground, so we know that there is a force of gravity. Bam. So that's F of G. Um, we know that there is a normal force. Back up. Okay, normal force. And then we also know he's slowing down, which usually anything going on the ground is going to have some kind of friction, right? It's essentially a drag. And because he's slowing down, you know originally he was going to the right, right? When he was coasting. But he's slowing down. So our friction force is actually going to be to the left. Okay? So we'll do, should we do, yeah, we'll just do F to the left. Okay? So it's to the left because he's slowing down, but he's coasting to the right while slowing down, right? So this is it. This is our diagram. Piece of cake, right? So let's do one more. We'll crank it up just a little bit. And that's it. Let's do F. So, let's just start with our dot here. An air track glider moves rightward at a constant speed. Okay? So, first thing we got to do, we got the force of gravity, obviously. We have the normal force. Okay? So, it's moving to the rightward, rightward. There is a little bit of friction in this. He's an air track guider. He's kind of gliding on air. Nevertheless, there's still a tiny bit of friction. So we have to add our friction force. It's not a lot. It's not as much as this case because this has a lot more drag. But nevertheless, um, there is a little bit of friction. Otherwise, it would literally never stop, right? Because if it's in motion, it stays in motion. If there's no friction, it, it wouldn't stop even if gravity's on it, because it's not ever going to touch. Okay, so I wanted to bring a picture in for this one, because you'd, you'd never know if you, you didn't see a picture, or you just knew everything about it, you took physics for whatever. But So you know an air track is, it's something that sits on a track, it's almost like a ski ball thing, a linear ski ball deal, where air moves up and it really, really shuts down the friction. It makes friction uh, extremely small. Um, how it accelerates is, if you notice, there is a string attached to the object, 
and then it has a certain amount of mass at the edge of the spring so it can kind of accelerate the object because otherwise the object's not just going to start accelerating when you turn the air track on um, so that's why we're looking at it note it starts it goes at a constant speed but notice what's doing that is not as an not an applied force but rather a tension force because there's a string used so I wanted to get that picture up there because otherwise like I said it's very hard to uh, to get why this other thing is here so our force to the right we know it moves rightward right is our tension force okay so we've got four forces we have the force of gravity we've got the normal force we've got the force of friction which is small because it's on an air track but nevertheless and then we have our tension force which is the force kind of accelerating to the right so do these they're not very hard uh, they don't really get much trickier than F um, that's that's about it I mean I'm looking at the key right now and honestly I don't see anyone any of them that are harder than F maybe some that are equal but that that's about it so if you guys got any questions ask me awesome job